Today, the Christian town of Karakosh is free of ISIS for the first time in more than two years. It will require massive rebuilding. And as Sister Diana of the Nineveh Relief Organization told CBN News, it also needs security. It's number one priority. That's because ISIS, also known as Daesh, is only the latest group to target these Iraqi Christians. It's a continuous persecution since 2003. Villages are empty now, uh, probably destroyed. The heritage is, is gone, uh, the, the past, and all of these uh, good and strong memories, it's not there anymore. The numbers back up their fear. Constant attacks have caused the population of Iraqi Christians to drop from 1.5 million in 2003 to less than 300,000 in 2016. This is the Ashti refugee camp in the Ankawa neighborhood just outside of Erbil. It's where thousands of Christians have lived since ISIS forced them to flee more than two years ago. Now there's proposals to establish a safe zone for Christians and other ethnic groups in the plains of Nineveh. U.S. Congressman Jeff Fortenberry of Nebraska introduced one proposal saying in part, the indigenous communities of Iraq's Nineveh Plain region, Assyrian, Chaldean, Syriac Christians, Yazidis, and others have a right to security. House Resolution 152 would support the Iraqi creation of a safe zone, allow for autonomy, and commit the international community to help maintain the security. They envision a three-level security system with a local Christian militia, the Iraqi army or Kurdish military, and an international rapid response unit. Because without this, the cradle of Christianity will be done. Christians will not be able to, to live in Middle East, not only in Iraq, in the whole Middle East. Assyrian Aid Society President Ashur Askriya says Christians are not new to the land. It's important because it's a Christian indigenous land. Iraq and the Middle East, uh, we are not visitors here <laughs> because sometimes people, they think that we, uh, we are not from this land because now we are already like minorities in this region. Sister Diana warns her church is in danger of disappearing. So if people do not return to this town, if the Syriac Catholic Church does not come back here, we're going to be spread all over the world. In a few years, there will not be a Syriac Catholic Church in Iraq. Steve Reich is with the Chaldean Church. For security reasons, we won't show his face. He says discouragement can be a killer. I think uh, one of the dangers in the West is we look at these people from afar and we say, oh, nobody's trying to kill them today. They're living in a tent. They're getting some kind of food, which is all fine. Uh, if you don't care about whether or not they survive as a community and keeping them uh, alive in a situation where they've got no hope, they've got no future, what's more cool? You know, they're dying either way. They're dying inside. Ithara, a mother of three daughters, echoes that feeling and has a message for mothers in the West. For all the mothers that hear me today, we tell them we need a quiet life. We need a safe life for us and our children. In the meantime, Christians go on with their lives. Sister Diana led this graduation ceremony for those learning English as a second language. It's been a tough time, but they said they look to their Savior. May Jesus not forget us forever. Uh, with, uh, uh, that Jesus is with us uh, uh, all that time. I'm not going to lie to you. I cried a lot of nights, and praying to Jesus was absolutely, it helped me a lot. Race told CBN News, what he believes Christians in the West need to know. Don't forget them. Don't give up on them. They're still here and there's still hope, but there's only hope if the rest of the world's Christians continue to show solidarity with them. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Ankawa Refugee Camp, Northern Iraq.